developing um, a facility out of Salinas. Um, and so a little souther, uh, which you probably know well as the epicenter of uh, North America sal salad lettuce production. Um, at FarmWise, we are in business to really help growers transition in an era of increased pressures on the regulatory side, but also um, starting with labor. Um, we work there in California, and I think problems might be slightly different or um, than, than Europe, but, but are actually the consequences are the same. California and Arizona, who are responsible for most of the vegetable production um, in the United States, if we're talking green vegetables, um, have had you know an endless supply of lab of labor, um, cheap immigrant labor coming from Mexico primarily for decades, and for various reasons this is changing, and this is changing really fast. Also on the regulatory side, um, California is now has now implemented and started phasing in regulations around uh, minimum wage increase and overtime. Historically, in agriculture in California, overtime was not a thing. Um, so all of that are costs that end up being incurred by, by our growers um, and obviously people who are holding margins down, um, down the supply chain are not necessarily paying them more for the job that they're doing. So um, there needs to be changes around production costs and how, how this breakdown happened. Um, and also obviously as a society and you know, as, as, as we're moving forward into big climate changes, um, the need for more sustainable farming practices or farming practices that are more catered toward our planet and, and, and maybe centered around what the plant needs in real time versus um, what maybe we've learned how to do so far um, has to be implemented. Um, and so our, our role at our farmers and our mission is really to leverage artificial intelligence and robotics, so two pretty sophisticated type of technology and technological fields that had had many advances over the past decades um, to empower farmers um, with new kind of farm equipment um, and processes and solutions to, to help them farm at a lower cost. And so here you are being presented with Titan. Titan is our fourth generation of weeder. This is our very first product. Um, we're tackling automated mechanical weeding. Um, the process that's usually done um, in America, at least with um, only hand crews, very, very little herbicide or chemi chemistry available during the, the post-emergence phase. So um, mostly growers will rely on crews of 15 to 25 people hand hoeing the entire field for several hundreds of dollars an acre per season. Um, and so we are leveraging two types of things. On the one side, this machine can see and can detect crops from weeds. Um, so we are, have built algorithms, models, we call them crop detection models, think Facebook or meta facial recognition, but for crops. And um, we're also not only um, identifying the crop, we're also identifying the stem. So the, the really the center of the crop. And that is super important because then phase two, we're able to calibrate or teach the machine how to calibrate with high precision blades around the crop that will open and close. And so um, as we say it here, we do intra row and inter crop weeding. So we have both tools that moves with several degrees of freedom, laterally up and out, forward and back. And then we have um, fixed tools that will you know, clean in between the lines and the furrows um, and the shoulders. Um, so those are shoulders of the bed. So those are our, our this is our primary product and um, this is what we're doing today. And so this machine is both a tractor and a smart implement. Um, moving forward, things, things may change, but this is how our current fleet of machine looks like. And this is what we're deploying today on California and Arizona farms. So maybe I think what would be cool for you guys is to see the machine in action. So I'm just actually gonna uh, pop up a quick video so you can see it all. All right. So today um, we have about 14 of these machines that are working interchangeably from one farm to another. We are um, operating as a service. So we're not selling those machines as of today. Um, the machine works on a variety of what we call green vegetables, to put it simply, um, lettuce, uh, you're gonna see some uh, broccoli, some celery in this video. This is 
a very, very weedy field down um, in near Santa Barbara, uh, where essentially looks like your garden, your backyard, but no, it's, um, it's totally a field. <laughs> um, and here you can see what's been really kind of awesome over the past few years is really uh, working with crops that are planted at a tighter at a higher density. Um, so here you see the machine in like cauliflower, which um, is planted as around 5.5, 6, 6 inches apart when we had originally, you know, kind of trained our machine on lettuce, uh, which is a nine inch crop to crop spacing. So way tighter, this way bigger. This is celery. And this is another big blanket of weeds for you. Um, and I believe this is a celery crop as well. Also down a down in Oxnard, which is a, a nice area that also has very well known for its wine down the coast of California. So each machine is operated by one human and that's it. Uh, so this point I like to I like to emphasize um, we are using we're still using human operators. Uh, this machine is not fully autonomous. Um, what's been really a focus of ours is automating the process. Um, so re replacing, so to say, the people who are actually not there in the market anymore. Um, so really automating the process of weeding. Um, autonomy features, um, I think, are coming there, it's going to become a real commodity in the next few years. And I think those are two different things. Um, our team's expertise is, is, you know, around computer vision and robotics, and those two contribute to building autonomy features. So could we do it? Yes. Is this a focus? Has, been, has it been a focus up now? No. And will it be in the next like 24 months? Not really. I think we want to, we want to keep, you know, reusing our core technological stat and optimize other farming processes and move into more crops. But so today, those machines are not fully autonomous. We rely on a human operator for supervision. Um, and it's also regulator, a, re, a regulatory requirement out in, out in California. Um, and, and those people are kind of the first interface between you know, what's happening in the field and our engineers. Um, over time, obviously, our goal is to have one operator monitoring several machines and then monitoring it from a distance um, and so on. So over time, obviously, decreasing the reliance on, on human supervision is obviously um, a focus. So as I said, we're operating as a service. So we charge our, our, our partners, our farmers, a fee per acre to do the entire weeding job. So our guys are responsible for bringing the machine to the field. Um, so driving, transportation, operation, maintenance, and then you know, we leave the field and, and, and goodbye. Um, that, that's how we work and that's how we've been kind of expanding business um, in Salinas, in the area of Santa Maria, and then um, Yuma, Arizona. Um, we really believe the service model is very, um, very, 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 it's very good fit for both who we are as a company today and uh, for the people we partner with. Um, for them, there is zero capital investment upfront. Um, we're it's pretty low risk, um, and and it allows them to have the flexibility to test us out on various commodity, get themselves familiar with the technology, um, and and eventually we all know that there will be some purchasing, um, some some intention to purchase over the next few years, and we want to also be able to 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 cater to that. Um, we on on our end, it's you know we're able to maximize the utilization of machine. Um, by moving them from one farm to another. And we've been, you know, very busy. Um, we're, we have tripled our revenue this year. We've been commercially available since 2019. We were working with two pilot farms. Uh, today we work with 18 of the 25 largest grower um, out here in California. So we're really um, expanding the business and, and, you know, maximizing the utilization of each machine, improving metrics, speed, coverage, weeding quality, and so on. Um, and we're also building a next generation of machine. Um, we are retrofitting the design for it to be even more reliable and um, modular. And obviously, this is really our expertise. Um, and then ease, ease, ease of operation is also a focus, obviously. 
right now with the through the service model and her, having our own operators operating the machine we've been controlling the entire chain um so as we transition into a model that's both allowing service and direct sales um our goal is to make our goal is to make this machine easy to operate as much as possible um by you know any operator that's out on a farm um without huge technical supports or technical skills from the get-go um we want to keep the modularity of the machine and the sophistication of the machine in the outcome but want to make it simple and bulletproof um and we're dropping the first part of the machine which is you know we were doing everything from scratch from the tractor to the implements and our really our core expertise and focus is on the implement um so this machine will be this implements will be compatible with every industry standard tractors and um attached through PTO and um we are right now testing a first prototype and we'll be essentially uh rolling out this machine and doing demos um in the spring of 2022 out here in California um we will be taking pre-orders by the end of the year 2022 and rolling out building more machines as we go and our goal is again to grow through service because we believe for certain farmers it will always make sense to use us, us as a service provider or us as a service plus through a machine they would have purchased but then we want to see also offer the opportunity for people to own um and you know serve certain areas where it wouldn't make sense for us to have a, have a service center there but uh it would make sense to sell the machine uh and then just a queue just a few words about our team. So today I think we hit the 70 people mark um and we keep growing which is interesting um as a you know early employee of the company. Uh it's it's definitely we're definitely shifting into um a larger team. Um today we have a very like a wide array or a palette of talents throughout the team that goes from you know deep agricultural operation knowledge. So as you understand up until now we are both a, a, you know a tech company and we also are a an agricultural service provider and those are you know obviously two very different skills so we've been hiring you know key people on the sales side and operation side folks who have been you know holding positions at top farms here in the valley and uh, who know how to how to build it all from you know from from a to z and we also have you know top engineers that are coming from the autonomous vehicle world or um space um something very trendy out here uh but we are an autom automotive industry um people who have been you know learn how to scale teams as well um and and yeah so today 70 people probably a good split between um 35 to 40 people on the engineering team and all the rest is in operation um and we have backed by venture capital um traditional funds from silicon valley so your traditional vc um um who will invest through private equity and we're also we also have partnerships with strategic investors both in the tractor world um tractor manufacturing world and in the chemical service provider out here we have a company called Wilbur Ellis who provides service to farmers for chemical pesticide application it's one an investors of ours so we have a, a good balance of that and we raised over um yeah over 30 million dollars in capital today um and what's coming next for us is as i said we try to grow from what we do today uh very well which is automated weeding on this pallet of crop from lettuce cauliflower broccoli radicchio kale um celery cabbage and try to grow this list um we're entering lower value crop like processing tomatoes is a, is a big deal in california peppers melons um and so there is a growth in crop and there is also obviously an interest in seeing this kind of detection or vision capability can power other types of optimization in different tasks that are conducted on a farm whether it's spraying or fertilizing um obviously all the crops i i've mentioned before are crops that are hand picked um you know harvesting automation of harvesting is an enormous subject here as it is probably also in europe um so we're interested in exploring it all and 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 see where it makes most sense for us to invest time and resources and bring value to growers and i think that's it for me i'm probably a bit early happy to take any questions and thanks so much for your attention
sorry. Sorry, um, thanks a lot, uh, Pauline. That was a very nice presentation. Um, beautiful slides, uh, very good information. So um, I see that Joris uh, Ursam already asked the question, what are the costs uh, for weeding per acre? Yep, it's a super good question. It's hard to give uh, one single answer because it really depends on the commodity um, and is it organic or conventional? It will also depend on the, wheat, the labor pressure you're experiencing. So we don't have like a one price sheet that I can share with everybody. Um, but the way the way to look at it is the following. There are crops that are planted at a pretty like, um, let's say high density, high density, not in the sense of spinach, but in the sense of, you know, brassica, for instance. So your broccoli, as I said, if we're looking at a, the seed line from stem to stem, 5.5 to 6 inches. Sorry, I've been living in the U.S. for six years and I can't convert very fast. Um, so I'll let you do the math. Um, and then you have lettuce, which are around nine to ten inches apart. And so obviously when the spacing is really wide or really is wider, it allows us to kind of fly through the field. And we're reaching, you know, close to an acre, an, acre, an hour, if not more on this. That like cauliflower is, a, is another one. Um, artichokes is another, is another one. Um, when it comes to broccoli, as you saw in the video, stems are really tight. Um, despite the broccoli being a pretty robust crop, even at weeding stage, you don't want to shock them too much. Um, so we are going slower. So that this is what we're factoring into the price as well, is we're going slower, it's slowing down our operation. We're going to take us more time to finish this field, so we're charging more. Um, and then organic versus conventional is an obvious one because, you know, um, you can multiply, you can do a factor free, I'd say, on, on, on the, the price. Value of the crop. Yeah, exactly. And then um, in terms of like to give you a ballpark number. Uh, so again, I'm going to talk per acre, uh, which is not a unit that you're going to love, but sorry. We can convert that. <laughs> um, we're trying to be on par with what they are paying on the hand weeding side. So we want to be obviously very competitive and we want to make it more interesting for them to use a service like ours um so we would be in between let's say below 500 dollars an acre on all commodities and above 160 170 five an acre so that would be um, 500 dollars per acre would be something around 1250 dollar per hectare for the for the european uh, units of measure and is that then for, for the whole season, uh, I pay 1250 or it's per pass? It's per pass, per pass. And usually, uh, unless we're dealing with like a crazy weedy field where we're asked to do two passes, um, which is still rare today, uh, we'll come once per cycle. Okay. And so as you know, California grows two to, th like it's two to three crops a year. Um, so one acre could be seen farm-wise two to three times, but per cycle, you know, if you're computing the production costs per acre for one cycle, that's like one cost. Yeah, that's that's the single fee. Okay, great, clear. But yeah, um, that just that just yeah that just really matters on crop and type of organic or non-organic practices. Thanks a lot. And and I, I I don't know if you, are you planning to to go into Europe and and what kind of model uh, will you be using when you're um, extending to Europe? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Europe is a huge market. Um, we we have a few Europeans on the team actually. Uh, just it's random. It's, it was not on purpose, but we're a few uh, French um, people, and we're we're super interested in bringing the machine and doing demos and also kind of understanding, first of all, like gathering product requirement. Can we really just bring our machine and will it work there? Um, it looks like there are standard bed measurements across the world, but um, things like that, you know, we have built this machine to work on enormous outdoor US farms. Um, so, we're not, you know, we're pretty aware of the fact that we'll probably need some adjustments, um, but we are definitely, definitely very interested in bringing a machine and how will will it look like there? 
same thing uh would love to be able to sell uh would love to be able to offer any option that makes sense to growers uh we have a you know very good relationship with companies like bonduel um so if we could organize like demo days on their super great experimental farms and you know show the machine to as many people as we can and get feedback um that'd be super useful but no i would say there is no clear plan um we'd love to bring a machine in the next two years nice another question what are your expectations for machine harvest do you think that given the lack of labor that seems to worsen at a higher speed uh, nowadays do you think that the move to machines will go faster than expected yeah i think um there is uh a big need for automated cutting. So the way we look at harvesting, there are obviously three kind of big steps. There are people who cut, people who pack, and then there is all the palletizing, organization of boxes on the trailer. Um, at least again, like that's that's the farm I visited here in the US. Uh, so I don't know how much it differs. I would assume that it's pretty similar. Um, but so um, automating packing feels like these these things are already happening in processing facilities. Um, so those, we see them at incremental type of innovations that will probably be brought by the farms themselves because those farms are vert vertically integrated. Most of them already have processing plants and so have that knowledge, you know, from indoors that could be just brought out outdoor. Uh, what really is missing here is, is the automated cutting. And, you know, if we get really fancy, that'd be like selective cutting. So really understand what's a harvestable head, what's not. Um, Obviously, there are sometimes certain packing depending on size. Um, so understanding vol volumetric data could be an interesting thing to do. But then just cutting, having a perfect cut to the point that you're removing enough leaves around the crop, you know, so that you're uh, optimizing your cutters and your trimmers. Um, well, that would be wonderful. And putting this head on a belt, I think that would be already like a, pr a pretty tough challenge to, to, uh, to overcome. Um, but this would be our focus, obviously, would be on the automated cutting. Wow. Great to hear. Um, is there any other questions? Oh, I see. Yeah, diesel. Bear with the wolf. We're not an, uh, um, we're obviously not an electric robot. So, the, yes, the robot is running on, on diesel. Sorry, yes, it runs on diesel. Um, the choice, obviously, we'd love if, you know, um, if you want to help us develop a hybrid motor, uh, you know, we want to be cleaner. Obviously, that's definitely, you know, um, we're a sustainable, sustainability company. We want to bring, you know, this to the forefront. Uh, we, we do believe that, you know, we made the choice early on to, to go with diesel because there's already so many changes that we're introducing with such an innovation. We had to integrate ourselves, you know, in the workflow of the farms and in their processes really smoothly and that was removing one pain point out of the equation uh, but over time yes we'd love to be able to um we'd love to be able to to offer that or to work on um project of electrification of some sort yeah then there's a lot of interest also i think it relates to our company uh, one of mm -hmm. our company specializations which is onion uh, there's two questions regarding onion and carrots um, are mm -hmm. you already working on a solution for those kind of crops? Yeah, so um, for um, onions and carrots, we do believe the uh, the way we weed today, so you've seen it's like blades moving, um, blades moving around the crops, opening and closing. For that, um, we do believe like if we talk just carrot, for instance, different actuation is needed. Um, we're going to knock some carrots down. So uh, we're seeing, obviously, we all, probably all I've heard of, of this laser company, um, you know, lasering out weeds as it goes. There are um, nice potential around electric, you know, electri using electricity to zap the weeds. So th there are different approach. We are super interested in moving into this space, uh, but also fully realizing that this is the machine that you're looking at right now is obviously not going to be the one that's going to be uh, weeding those fields. Um, we don't really believe in finger weeders to um, weed effectively. I know some companies have that approach, but if we're really talking removing the people who are on their hands and knees, pulling the weeds out with gloves, like um, um, this is not going to happen with the type of technologies that we're leveraging here and not with like shallow finger weeders. Um, so, yeah, this project's currently internally in discussions at FarmWise is... Um, how do we grow into how do we provide for the sectors and spinach is another one um 
um, for onions from certain market research. I've, I've chatted with growers out of the Midwest who are growing onions on um, four lines per bed with they are, they have interest in, you know, um, a shifting cultivation bar that can clean the top of the bed and the sides and not really remove weeds in between. They're, you know, reaching the point where they really don't have any labor. So whatever we can do is great. Um, I wish for us to provide a full weeding solution um, because it's a, it's a big market, like you said, uh, Joris. It's absolutely a huge a huge market in the U.S. The EU. Um, so more to come of that. Hope see we're looking at this like super seriously. Great. And regarding this exciting topic, I personally I also have one question. Um, what do you think that we as a breeding is there any task for us to do as a breeding company to to foster the, the 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 transition to robotics or do you think like we are the bright people and we can solve that with our robots we can work around your best plants yeah i i think on the harvest automation harvesting there's obviously a lot that can be done here high risk broccoli from other companies is something that's you know being trialed here or, you know are interested in in this kind of solution to alleviate some of the pain points um, that a crop like broccoli brings up um, when it comes to mechanical harvesting um, because there's so much what we call trash foliage that's very robust that you know kind of clog the machines uh, you know I'm talking about certain prototypes that have been developed here in California um, we we think yeah the future is a partnership altogether with um, you know farms um, farms who are interested in solving this problem, startups, and then seed breeders. Um, for breeding, in terms of for weeding onions and carrots, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you know, when I think about, it's also demand drives, um, consumer demands, maybe driving the, driving the certain ways those market are taking. Um, thinking about here in the US, baby carrots are huge. And so therefore growers will plant at a super high density because you know that's the way to grow a carrot that's gonna be really thin and long and it's gonna be really easy to cut into, you know, smaller carrots that can be packed. Um, so not a lot of stuff we can do there, um, except except for um, kind of trying to change people's mind around carrot eating. <laughs> but yeah, we'd love to brainstorm ways to 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 figure this out together. All right. Okay, thanks a lot for this uh, very exciting uh, presentation. Um, for sure, it will also be available later for, for other people uh, to join. So we will definitely share this um, this presentation in our network uh, of growers. And then, uh, yeah, I'm left uh, with just to thank you for the very nice uh, presentation. Thanks for all the guests uh, being present. Um, and I think then uh, this will meet the, this will be the end of our virtual event. So thanks a lot also for getting up early from the US. Uh, very much appreciate it. Everybody enjoy your day and you can find the sessions uh, online in I think tomorrow. Have a very good day. <laughs>